Welcome to Altium Designer DRCs on PCBs. In this module, we will learn about running design rule checks on our WC Topping PCB design. The PCB has been routed, polygons added for power distribution, and there are no further updates to the design. At this point, we are ready to run DRCs to validate the design prior to going to fabrication. Having rules in place provides the needed checking for manufacturing. Opening up the Design Rule Checker from the Tools drop-down menu, we should first explore the setup. At the top level, we have options for creating reports and what will be included in the generated reports. Diving deeper under the Rules to Check, we see all the rules listed with Online or Batch Mode enabled. While this is a nice summary, looking at each subgroup is simpler. Electrical. Here we can enable and disable the various rules when either running Online DRC or running the batch mode DRC checking. I would leave them all on as they are important for achieving success with your completed PCB. Routing. Again, we have online and batch checkboxes. These are normal settings to use. Surface mount. Here we have the surface mount related checks. Test points. I'm not using any test point rules for this particular class. Therefore, I have them all disabled. If your design or company requires test points, then these should be enabled and the rules configured for the particular design. Manufacturing group is mostly enabled for batch runs, as you can see. In some cases, I enable the online DRC when doing placement, and then later on I disable the online DRCs. High speed group. For this design, it's not an issue, but for yours, consider keeping them enabled in the online and batch runs for DRC. Again, they will need to be set up in order to perform the needed checking. Placement. Again, all of these should be checked and should be run. Signal integrity. This is an advanced topic covered in advanced training, but for this design, it's not necessary. One thing that always gets me at least once every few weeks is hitting the OK button instead of the Run Design Check button. The OK is just to save our current setup and close the window. Clicking on Run Design Check kicks off the DRC running, and when finished, a report window opens up. Here we see the Design Rule Verification Report with the summary of violations, as well as sections detailing the violations for each of the groups. Scrolling down, we can see the subgroups with details. Clicking on a violation brings us to the PCB for that violation. Note that violations are highlighted in a bright green. I find the summary most useful. Well, especially when it's a clean report. To clear the error marks, click on the tools and then click on Reset Error Markers. Normally, I use the PCB Rules and Violations panel to sequentially find and fix reported violations. Let's open that up if it isn't already open. The PCB Rules and Violations panel lists all of the rules and allows for running of any individual rule or all of the rules directly from this panel. For the purpose of this lesson, there were a number of errors introduced to illustrate the process of finding and fixing errors from the PCB Rules and Violations panel. The violations are all listed in the bottom section. They are populated at this point because we had just run the DRC checks and did not clear them. We can clear all the reported violations and the green highlights from the PCB by clicking on the Reset Error Markers section from the Tools drop-down menu. In this panel, we can scroll through the rule classes. We could right-click on the All Rules entry and then left-click on the pop-up window menu offering the option to run the selected entry. In this case, all the rules would be run. My approach is to start with the more significant reported violations and proceed to the lower priority. Starting with the reported shorts and then ending up in this case looking at the Silk to Silk violation. Clicking on the Short Circuit rule entry, we see four violations listed. Remember the violations are populated here because we ran the DRC check and did not reset the error markers. We could just rerun them if needed. Double clicking on the first entry opens up a violations detail window showing the details. Clicking on the jump button to zoom into the area on the PCB and then click on the highlight button momentarily highlights the violating objects. This can be a little hard to see and you may need to click on it a couple of times. It's complaining about a track to pad connection. Looking closer at the net names for the track and the pad, we see the issue. One is named 3v3, and the other is 3v3bd. Perhaps at some point the net was changed and the net names were not fixed for the tracks. No problem. Looking at the area around this short, 
we see that the track is misnamed and should in fact be 3v3bd. Select it and in the properties panel name pull down select 3v3bd. Now we rerun the short circuit, DRC check, and all is fixed. Select unrouted nets and run it to update the report and see all the current unrouted nets. Now we did have four originally flagged but now with the short circuit fixed we only have two. Double clicking on the 5 volt unrouted net violation entry opens up the violation details window. Clicking on the jump button to zoom in the area in the PC and clicking on the highlight button to highlight the offending objects in the PCB, let's click OK and close the window. Here we see the two 5 volt pins on the connector with a missing connection icon between them. Note it looks like a capacitor. Adding a trace between them will fix this. Rerunning the unrouted nets will show this is fixed. To fix the un other unrouted net, we will place a couple of vias to connect this ground trace from the top to the ground polygon on the bottom layer. Running the component collision rule check, we see one violation we need to check. Double clicking on it, we zoom in, and we, at first, it's not obvious what the issue is. Let's look at it in 3D. Here we see C3 and the power connector becomes clear. There is a collision because the C3 is underneath it. We can see the issue, obviously. The power connector has been placed, so we need to move to C3 to fix this. Moving on to the silk to silk clearance violation, we see the 40 pin connector footprint has a clearance issue. In this case, we could waive this violation, giving the reason that it was built into the footprint. This is a nice feature as the waiver gets logged and is reported in the DRC error report when we rerun it. Let's rerun the DRC check now to get the report. As expected, the silk to silk violation shows up, but there's also a waiver listed for it. By now, the process should be clear. Run the individual rule, double click on the listed violations, jump and highlight, and then fix and rerun the rule to check. I always check for shorts first, just in case a global edit caused shorts. I generally cycle through all the rules in the PCB Rules and Violations panel by successively tapping the up or down arrows on the keyboard to check. We should be clean now and ready for releasing to fabrication. This concludes the module DRCs on PCBs, where we ran design rule checks on our PCB, reviewed using the Rules and Violations panel for enumerating violations, both finding and fixing them all in the context of preparing the PCB for release to fabrication. Please do the DRCs on PCB exercise.